All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another training wrap up. We are training for Westerns in March to qualify ideally for IPF Worlds in June of 2024. Now, this week was the last week of the training block. So we've gone from kind of really having to ease into things. Uh, I think starting the block, I was maybe around 100 kilo high bar squat, if that. For reference, my best low bar squat is 320 kilos. So very much a far cry from what I'm capable of. This block I've focused on the high bar squat as the competition squat, the movement that I've been pushing uh, as far as my lower body and squat movement are concerned, and was able to progress the squat to, I believe, 227 kilos for four, which, you know, still isn't necessarily what I would be training with on my low bar squat if I were healthy, et cetera, et cetera. But, it's a pretty far cry from where I started the block. My pain levels and discomfort levels in my knee, which has been the, the problem that I've been kind of coming back from for the last little while, have been pretty low. I've been able to progress throughout the block, add weight, uh, you know, the high bar squat is definitely something where we're challenging the knee specifically, right? It's, it's intentionally going to be demanding on the joint that I'm rehabbing. So I think if I can get to a point where I'm able to do high bar squats with a decent amount of weight and get to, yeah, I would probably say it was maybe around a six RPE, then I think we're in a good spot to start our sort of more real training next block. So squat all throughout the block progressed quite well. Leg press is sort of the, I guess, secondary movement that I've been using to push the lower body push movement. And I've really been enjoying it. You know, I've been doing belt squats as well, but more using the belt squat to try to just bottom right out and get a lot of range of motion and a lot of movement. I've found that pushing the belt squat weight wise and intensity wise just hasn't really given me what I want. I, you know, I, I think there's a, there's been a couple of big pendulum swings where, you know, belt squat's the best thing ever and it solves all the problems and builds people's squats single-handedly and it's the best exercise on the planet to now, you know, probably people are kind of split on it. And I'm, I'm maybe on the other end of the camp where it's like, you know, if I'm looking for a supplemental, you know, way to train my muscles for the squat as opposed to training the movement of the squat, I'm probably gonna go to a leg press. I find that I get more muscle feel, more mind muscle, more pump, more work, more indicators of metabolic stress and, and muscular mechanical tension and all that kind of stuff from the leg press than I do from the belt squat. And I find the belt squat is, you know, different, uh, quite different from my, my comp movement. So, you know, the, the argument that the specificity is a little bit better there, I think falls a little short for me. Anyways. That's been kind of the, the protocol for developing my squat over the last little while, as well as doing uh, Bulgarian split squats, which have been an interesting way to kind of challenge the affected knee. And as of this week, I actually started to have to pair those back a little bit. And I did get a little bit of pain on my, uh, on my work today in the split squats, which is unfortunate. But I think it's also one of those things where I kind of have to push to the edge of that discomfort. And this being the last week of the block, I'm okay kind of butting up against a little bit of pain because I know next week is gonna be really pared down, really pared back, and I know how good I felt after the washout or deload heading into this block. I'm confident I can recreate that recovery and that alleviation of the symptoms of my knee with this next washout as well before I resume normal training. In terms of the bench press, it's been a little up and down. I've had sort of unfortunate circumstances. Um, I know some people might be aware, but my dog needed an emergency surgery one week and then I got sick the next week. And I basically had symptoms of that sickness since, and that was three weeks ago now. So because of that, I've had a few days where I wasn't eating as much or I didn't sleep as well because I was up all night coughing and those kinds of things unfortunately did impact my ability to push and progress the bench. However, I ended with a pretty decent 
177 for four this week. And that to me was a good way to top off the block, you know, uh, especially considering the circumstances weren't ideal. I would have loved to hit 182 for four and for it to be on RPE, but I hit 177 for four and it was an absolute grinder and it was 10 RPE. Is that ideal? No, but you gotta, you gotta play the hand you're dealt, you know, and you have to try to maximize the training that you can get in the conditions that you have the training in. So the other things I've been pushing this block have been the close grip bench press, done a little bit of feet up. I think I had a few sessions against bands. Some of the secondary movements, I didn't get as many exposures to because of getting sick, having some extra stress with the dog. Some sessions got condensed, which meant, meant usually bench was one of the ones where I didn't get all of the exposures. So I'm hoping that next block we're able to kind of rein that back in and continue on the sort of trajectory of progress that I've had on the bench for quite some time now. With the deadlift, I really think we've kind of, we've unlocked something, this block, in terms of the ability to sit down and, and get a little more knees and hips forwards. And, you know, I mentioned this in the last video and maybe the last couple of videos, but I really do think I'm unlocking something where I'm finding comfort in the patterns and the sort of specific styles of, of deadlift that have given me a lot of success in the past. If you look at the pause deadlifts that I did today, I got up to 225, 227 and a half for six paused and uh, got up to 230 for four conventional yesterday. Conventional, I don't know why anyone does it. It feels bad. It feels incredibly uncomfortable. It feels less efficient. And I just don't, I don't know why anybody would ever want to do that to themselves. Going back to sumo today was like a breath of fresh air. Uh, I also ate a couple of enchiladas, maybe a little too close to my workout yesterday. So that probably had something to do with the uh, discomfort I was feeling setting up for deadlifts. But I'm a bigger guy now, you know what I mean? I strapped the belt on, I got my knees in, my quads are just digging into my belt, digging into my gut, and I'm trying to pack myself into this tiny little space. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep pulling sumo. Just feels better. Anyways, I digress. Now, in the maelstrom of information that I've thrown at you all, Maelstrom. I forgot to mention that, uh, yeah, if anyone wants to win a gift certificate that's good for the value of one of these brand spanking new Calgary Barbell t shirts, well, you can go ahead and use the word of the day in the comments section below as well as ask a good question. And if we choose your question, well, we're going to let you know, and then you're going to win that gift certificate, and we're going to answer the question not live but on air, if that makes sense. Speaking of which, what's our question, Dylan? Uh, we have a series of questions that opens up a more sort of broad topic here, but uh, yeah. we're gonna get into it. One person with multiple questions. This comes from Juicy the Natty. They say, Cadre, just gonna keep copying and pasting my question until you answer them, LOL. LOL. And the question is, or I guess questions are, how has your love for heavy music played a role in your lifting journey? Have you trained with metal artists? Do your peers enjoy lifting to death metal too? Have you ever considered doing more content with music related stuff beyond the recommendation reels, which I love by the way. Thanks, metal sign emoji. All right, so firstly, how has my love for heavy music impacted my love of lifting weights? I think the big thing there is that for me, so I, I, for anybody who doesn't know, I played in a, in a couple of metal bands. Um, you can find an album that we did that I did vocals on that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, the band was called Nihilate. I believe the album was called Synthetic Order. Anyways, it's on Spotify and everything. Check it out if you care. Um, but for me, playing in bands, was a, a very cathartic experience. Getting up on stage and screaming into a microphone and stomping around and headbanging and 
all of the things that came with that was just a massive, like a gigantic emotional release and helped, I think, you know, keep me level. And I think on some level, you know, I've always held on to that love for music as a cathartic experience, but it's also become very much tied into lifting being a cathartic experience. You know, getting amped up, screaming, hitting some big weights, you know, really challenging myself to the point where my brain just turns off and, and kind of goes numb for a second. You know, under a heavy squat, lifting a heavy deadlift. I think that during those things, you get this like moment of, of bliss where nothing else exists. And I very much also had that in, I guess my, my short lived, I don't know if you can call it a musical career, but yeah. So I think in that way, the things have been similar for me and, and lifting kind of slowly replaced that. But I've also over the last couple of years, and this was like a, I think a lot of people developed interests, like special interests and, and, and started collections and stuff like that during COVID. And for me, that was rediscovering my love of discovering music and, and spending time looking at, you know, related artists or reading music blogs or watching videos um, like the, the Metal Monthly on Banger TV with Blaine. Uh, I, you know, I watched those religiously for a while and that was a, a wonderful doorway for me to like enter into a more underground metal scene um, and kind of start to appreciate a lot of that stuff and find out what was coming out and whatever. So, you know, for me, that was, that was when I started my record collection and when I kind of fell in love with the, the physical art of albums, of records. So have I trained with metal artists? Yes. So I got to train when I was in Portland with uh, Casey and Tony from Witch Vomit. Shoutouts to either of them if they're by chance watching this. Um, and I talk with some artists. I think there's actually a surprising amount of crossover between, you know, metal and powerlifting. There seem to be, you know, a decent amount of the same personality types drawn to these things, which I think is why we get so many questions and people really dig the, you know, album recommendations and stuff. Um, but Kevin Butler of, of Thy, Art, Thy Art is Murder, uh, Craig Reynolds from Straight From The Path are a couple guys that I talk to semi-regularly. And you know, those, it's it, just chatting on Instagram or whatever, but it, it began from a mutual love of, of lifting. So it is definitely cool to see, you know, people from bands that I love who are also into lifting and then being able to connect with them based on that. So it, it is cool. I would love to have more opportunities to lift with people in, in bands and, and musicians and stuff. Uh, if you're watching this in your touring band, you ever want to come through Calgary and have a sweet place to train, hit me up. Do your peers enjoy lifting to death metal? <laughs> uh, I laughed at this one. No, not really, I don't think. Uh, some of them, some of them, but not, not many who train here. Mostly no but I put them through it anyways. And then I judge them relentlessly for their musical choices. I'm kind of an asshole, an elitist prick about music. Have you ever considered doing more content with music related stuff? Yes, but I think mostly it's a time and attention and energy thing. I've actually joked with Dylan or, or talked semi-seriously with Dylan about setting up a little sound booth and doing like metal vocal covers to, to, to do more of that again, because I think it'd be fun, but it's like, the amount of time and energy that I would have to invest into doing that. I probably am not very good at it anymore um, from what I've, what I've done in my car by myself, which is how I learned how to do it. But yeah, uh, I don't know what else we would do other than maybe some lifting vlogs with, uh, with people who are in bands. I, I think it'd be cool, but yeah, I think we're kind of staying in our lane a little bit. But like I was saying before, I think it'd be cool to do a more robust album recommendation or like go through my record collection. Um, we did that once on stream and people seem to like it. So maybe there's more stuff there, but yeah, I don't think we'll be changing the main direction of the channel into being more musical, musically focused anytime soon. So. The apparel launches tomorrow. The apparel does not launch tomorrow. Oh wait, it does by the time this comes out because we're just announcing it today. But the apparel launches tomorrow. So if you want some of this 
cool stuff. We got hoodies, we got toques or toques, depending where you're from. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, three, shirts. three shirts, three shirts, a zip up hoodie and a toque. So check them out, slow burn launch. It's gonna be live tomorrow by the time this video is posted. So go get some of that. Hopefully you like it. That's it. Okay, bye.